Yamaha appears to have decided to update their whole range of AV receivers, but instead of upgrading everything at once, they divided the upgrades into two batches, the first of which comprised the more reasonably priced RXV6 and RXV4, along with the smallest of the Avantage units, the RX Atwo A. The revised versions of the top-tier Avantage receivers, including the RXA4A, RXA6A, and RXAAA, were also issued together with the second batch. Therefore, in today's Yamaha RXA4 review, we'll put to the test the best 7.2-channel receiver Yamaha currently is to offer. Three Yamaha receivers that were recently updated share a lot of characteristics. Although they plainly differ in terms of power outputs, amplifier counts, and a few more specialized features overall, their feature sets are more comparable than dissimilar. As a result, the RXA4 offers a variety of options if you're not looking for a receiver with more than seven channels of amplification. Let's examine the RX specifications now. A4A's AV receiver has 7.2 channels and 110 watts of power, as we already mentioned. We also get the regular DTS, X, and Dolby Atmos in addition to Dolby Surround. DTS Neural, X, and Dolby Atmos height virtualization. Yamaha Cinema DSP HD3 and Surround, AI, which are also featured in the hardware as unique Avenage upgrades for enhanced audio output, are only accessible in the top three Avenage models. The list of capabilities also includes high-definition audio, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth streaming, music cast, AirPlay 2, multiple zone capability, and, most importantly, HDMI 2.1 support. The Yamaha RX A4 receiver with 7 channels seems to be pretty capable. Based on previous Avantage launches, we expect the RX A4 to perform fantastically, but we won't know for sure until we put it to the test. The RX A4 and the RX A8 that we just looked at are exactly the same in terms of design. The only distinction between the two appears to be the smaller depth of this one. Its measurements are 435 by 270 by 442. But as always, you may turn the antennae horizontally to cut the height requirement to just 191 millimeters. The 16.2 kg weight is notably smaller than Yamaha's flagship receiver since there are less amplifiers integrated into the receiver's chassis. Compared to earlier models, the volume knob is now located in the center, and the LCD display screen is now fixed on the right side of the volume knob. The front of the device is almost entirely reflective. The display screen's second, smaller knob, located on the far right, is used to navigate it and select input sources. Above the smaller knob are three little indicators for zone, pure direct, and surround. AI while some touch controls, including return, menu, and the four SC and E buttons, are found on its right side. Behind the LCD screen, the IPAL microphone input port, one USB port for connecting external storage, the circular power button on the far left, and the conventional headphones connection are all located in the small, matte surfaced region on the lower part of the front face. While the absence of analog inputs does not especially surprise us, we would sorely want to have an HDMI input for convenience. In the future, hopefully, manufacturers will include this as a standard feature on all of their goods. No real surprises here. The unit's design is identical to that of the other Avenage offers in order to preserve parity among their models. Even though there are only little external differences between the Avenage units, the interior differences are the most noticeable. We first find an amplifier with a high slew rate. Like with all Avantage versions, slew rate measures how quickly an amplifier can respond to a sudden change in input level. It aids in precise signal transmission and is especially helpful with high-resolution audio transmissions. A single ESS Sabre East 9-7S Premier Audio DAC, which is less potent than the dual ESS Sabre East 926 PRO Ultra DAC found in the RX A8A, is how the RX A4 differentiates from the two bigger devices. They are all connected via the Qualcomm QC407 High Precision TSP which enables Dolby Atmos and DTS, X Immersive Home Audio. All Avantage receivers seem to share the fifth foot, which is positioned directly in the middle of the receiver. The Anti-Resonance Technology Wedge, as Yamaha calls it, dampens vibrations from the power transformer, power transistors, and heat sinks as well as vibrations that may be produced by the sound from the speakers in order to offer dynamic sound and focused, accurate reproduction. For Yamaha's testing to yield the greatest results, it appears that this foot has been advanced in the RX-A4A. 
The remote that comes with this device is surprisingly identical to the one we use with the RX A8A, with one small exception. There is now only Zone 2 available on the Zone switch at the top, which formerly had many alternatives. Although the layout is generally superior to what Yamaha gave in their entry-level versions, there are still several buttons that are unnecessary. Yamaha places a lot of emphasis on its scenes feature, thus these buttons are in a visible spot. Generally speaking, the remote is a bit long and has too many buttons, many of which are rarely used. Eventually, AV receivers must catch up to TV with less complicated remote controllers and more advanced user interfaces. The RX A4 satisfies the requirements for an Avantage device. Both the cabin and the chassis' recently renovated appearance show Yamaha's high standards. The receiver can support up to a configuration of 5.2, two channels if you choose an Atmos-enabled system because it can handle up to seven channels, along with all the standard audio formats including Dolby True HD, DTS HD Master Audio, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Digital and DTS, Dolby Atmos and DTS X are supported as usual. Oro 3D, which is only supported by the top two receivers, the RXA6 and the RXA8A, is not supported by this receiver. With the exception of this one omission, the receiver looks to have all of the additional audio features that the two larger devices provide. Current industry standards for receivers are Dolby Surround and DTS Neural X, which may have mixed earlier tracks like stereo mixes into full surround audio. This practice is customary. The top three Avantage releases in their revamped portfolio have the Cinema DSP HD3, which is Yamaha's premier DSP technology. If you're not familiar, Cinema DSP HD3 is Yamaha's exclusive technology for producing soundscapes. It takes use of multiple Cinema DSP engines, permits lossless decoding of 192 kg signals, and provides 3D processing to provide a second vertical dimension to the sound field. Using Cinema DSP, the receiver can simulate a variety of acoustic environments, such as music halls or athletic arenas, resulting in a whole new level of immersion. There are 24 DSP programs included in the device, which is the maximum number Yamaha has made available. The stereoscopic sound field technology can sometimes boost the overall volume and immersion of sound, but there are also numerous instances where the end effect might feel extremely false. We don't appreciate processed music that dramatically alters the original mix, so keep in mind that there is a lot of processing going on here. However, having this approach is great because you might prefer it to what we do. When employing Cinema DSP HD3, the receiver can additionally offer a variety of simulated functions. The first choice is the Virtual Cinema DSP, which produces up to seven channels of surround sound without the use of any additional surround speakers. The Virtual Cinema Front feature allows you to set your surround speakers in front of your listening position while still hearing surround action behind you. If your space is limited and you are unable to place your surround speakers where they need to be, this can be quite helpful. The benefit of silent film is another one. With just your headphones, you may enjoy surround and sound field effects. Additionally, support is given for virtual presence speakers, which can be created even when there are no actual presence speakers present. The virtual surround rear speaker feature allows you to hear action even when there aren't any real surround back speakers available. In previous years, Dolby Atmos height virtualization was not present. If you don't have the opportunity to add in ceiling or upward firing speakers to your system, Dolby Atmos height virtualization technology can help you duplicate the Atmos experience. Unfortunately, Yamaha did not include DTS Virtual, X like some other manufacturers did, a feature called Surround. AI was exclusive to the top-tier releases and was missing from earlier iterations. In order to maximize the surround effects in real-time, the DSP built an algorithm now analyzes each scene and focuses on specific sound elements such as ambient sounds, music, dialogue, and special effects. The source material will have a significant impact on the finished outcome, just as it does with all the other accessible technologies. This can be a nice choice for people who don't want it to mess about with the various DSP applications and prefer a more automated method to handle everything. Specific content can benefit from it, even though this wasn't always the case, and the final output felt much more altered than we would like. Having it as a feature, though, enables you to try it out. The receivers built in amplifiers can generate 110 watts per channel. Obviously, as more channels are used, the number falls. Unfortunately, all manufacturers still only provide us 
ratings for two channels, and it's growing more difficult to find precise numbers for using a full surround system. For our movie testing, we settled on a 5.1 two-channel setup with two height speakers above the main front channels and a single subwoofer in the front left of the testing area. The terrifying Godzilla vs. Kong 4K UHD sound mix was the film we chose to see. Everyone can agree that the movie has referenced quality audio, which is just what we needed to test out this new Yamaha. Despite differences in opinion over the technical aspects of the movie, there was never a time when we didn't feel as though we were thrown right into the middle of the action because to the excellent surround bubble the RX-A4 created. Due to the fact that the information was so useful, there was activity in all directions and along all axes. From beginning to end, the scene where Godzilla attacks Kong and the naval group serves as an example of how well surround sound can enhance this setting. The front sound stage was undoubtedly the most typical, albeit it wasn't the only one. Even during the most frantic action scenes, the conversation was kept separate in the center with exceptional clarity, and there was also a lot of depth and good extension. Some of the impressive panning effects included fighter planes flying all over the place, missiles being fired, and cannon fire turning our test area into a battleground. Each sound had such clarity and resolution that the Yamaha performed an excellent job with the details, greatly enhancing each scene. It is astounding how much information is presented during Godzilla and Kong's battle on the aircraft ship. The sound of the big metal structure being flung into the ocean like a toy, the small explosions, the metal shards flying everywhere, and the displacement of water were all perfect. We should also emphasize the amazing Atmos performance, even though surround activity could be more obvious. The overhead layer's activity and energy were enough to raise the immersion bubble above our heads. It had a wonderful height as well. The Atmos speakers improved the end outcome even if they weren't as noticeable as the other channels. A discussion of this film would be incomplete without discussing the booming bass, and the Omaha made the most of the chance by providing our subwoofer with all the necessary low-end data. Bass was simply superb. You'll continually crave more of the thunderous LFE that repeatedly hits every part of your body and the deep bass with shaking explosions. We observed the receiver for a much longer than was necessary for our evaluation since we were so happy with how well she performed. A receiver that can ultimately do it all is the Yamaha. It will produce a wide sound stage when the situation requires one, is not afraid to portray even the finest details, and can be sensitive when required. The dialogue was unmistakably audible, the surround effects were more vibrant than ever, the front performance was outstanding, and the Atmos effects expertly complemented the action. We were also getting butted by the bass, but we never voiced a complaint. What else do you require? Even though we tried to turn up the volume past what we would consider safe limits, the Yamaha didn't seem to crack under the pressure. Although its power is constrained, and it doesn't have the same punch as the previously reviewed flagship rx 8 a no matter how hard we pushed it, it never seemed unstable. In terms of music, the receiver can play back both basic lower quality audio formats like MP3, WMA, and NOC, which by the way can go up to 320 kbps, and high resolution audio files like FLAC, ALAC, WAV, or EFF files. DSD streaming is also possible up to 11.2 MHz. Early models could only play FLAC and WAV files up to 192 kHz. Thus, Yamaha looks to have improved the requirements in more subsequent generations. Additionally, the receiver is equipped with Yamaha's compressed music enhancer, which can improve the sound, quality of MP3, and other low-resolution audio files to levels that are nearly similar to high-resolution audio. Compressed Music Enhancer can also be used with Bluetooth, which often lowers audio quality in order to meet transmission requirements. Although a night and day transition shouldn't be expected in every situation, this feature, which we have seen in almost all of their releases, can undoubtedly help with poor quality footage. Then we performed our usual music test, selecting a few flag formatted favorites to stream over the front USB port for the best audio quality. Yamaha receivers are known for their ability to replicate music, so we were interested to see how the RX-A4 would fare. The item was every bit as good-looking as earlier Yamaha offerings and some of the more recent models in their updated collection. Excellent attention to detail, impressive balance, and good tone. The Yamaha was able to totally change the front sound stage thanks to its excellent sound imaging and precise positioning of every audio component. Despite the fact that purists would surely prefer to stick with the straight direct option in this case, we did try some of the several DSP Yamaha offers, 
and some of them were actually rather nice. Even if some of them felt a touch overprocessed, Yamaha did an amazing job with how much processing these apply to the original mix. As a result, you might like the group if you don't mind them significantly modifying the original song. The receiver once more showed outstanding frequency balance and stability. Nice mids over the entire dynamic range, with vivacious highs and thunderous lows. The technology never went beyond what it was capable of and was constantly conscious of its limitations. As we frequently do in our reviews, we tested the RX-A4 with heavy metal, jazz, classical, some electronic music, and even some opera, and we really couldn't find anything negative to say about it. It will surely be a feast for your ears if you use this to appreciate music because it sounded fantastic in all musical genres. We usually point out in our analyses that using an AV receiver might not be the greatest choice for many audio purists. However, putting everything in a single box is highly practical and saves a lot of room. In the end, why not use a single box to provide high-quality music, especially if your area does not allow for more flexibility? The Yamaha RX-A4 may not be as powerful as the RX-A8A, but it can't be compared in terms of output quality, attention to detail, and depth management of every area of sound to its bigger brothers. The Yamaha RX-A4 is every bit as good sounding as you'd expect from a Yamaha product, and especially from an Avantage AV receiver. Sincerely speaking, the wait was well worth it when we eventually received the new models. Although it might not be the best option, the RX-A4 should be at the top of your list of competitors in its particular category. The receiver's power is appropriate for its class, and the RX-A4 did sacrifice clarity or detail in the output of pure audio. It sounded delicate and enjoyable when mixed with music and visuals. The fact that Yamaha offers 7 HDMI 2.1 inputs will surely win over many gamers. The construction quality was up to par for an Avantage vehicle, and the feature package was more than sufficient. We'll mainly restate what we said in our review of the RX-A8 about the negatives. It is not exactly ideal that many of its HDMI 2.1 functions are currently locked and awaiting a future firmware upgrade that would unlock their full potential when you were willing to pay such a hefty price. A front HDMI port for easy access would be excellent, as the remote's design is not the best we have seen. In the end, the Yamaha RX-A4 should be regarded as one of the best, 7.2 channel AV receivers now available. Nothing provides a better assurance for your purchase than the fact that it embodies Yamaha's quality and sophistication.